Hey, come on. How can you not get fired up today? Come on. Yes, let's get this win. <sighs> Didn't really sleep. Excited about today. Game day. Excited. We have a quarterback who's won a Super Bowl. We got a quarterback that's won seven road games. Flacco's won seven road games, Tony, in his career. Let's make it eight. No one else has got eight. No. Eight is the Bre magic number. Breaking Feels good Tom Brady today, record. Tony. Feeling yep. good today. Feeling great. <laughs> it's always good when you got a chance to break a Tom, a Tom Brady record, so let's get that done for Flacco. Yeah, seriously, for everyone today who's nervous, I hear a lot of here we go, Brownies, here we go. Big, big, this is the day. Been waiting for this forever. I think it's a huge game, obviously, for Stefanski because he wasn't there in 2021 on the sidelines of the Steeler game. Big time stuff here, Tony. But when you read into the Flacco, and we're here for a lot of reasons, but Flacco's, you know, a big margin carpet ride while we're here. Super Bowl winning, 10 and 5 in the playoffs, seven <coughs> road victories. A lot yeah. more excitement after I was reading that stuff last night, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And listening to all that he's been saying all week. You know, talking about the course of the next five weeks and really using those words where this is not something where the team feels like they're ready to go into Houston and be done. Like This is a team whose sights are set on February. Yep. And hopefully they can take that first step and get the job done today. Flacco is the key. Uh, a lot of media taking Texans. I've seen that today to Andrew. And the Houston Texans are a live dog. Charlie, I agree with you about the kicking thing. But I think the Browns are going to win. It doesn't mean Texans are a bad team. I think I think this is going to be a very tough game today. Uh, I can see. I don't like playing Team Sony on the road when we're a favorite, but with Flack, I feel better about that. But the other thing that makes me nervous in this game, Texans with the young quarterback do not turn the ball over. The Browns do. It's one thing to get away with turnovers in a regular season. It's a much different story in the playoffs. Yeah, definitely the biggest concern today. Just it's been an issue all year. If the Browns can not even just put a zero in the turnover column, but just limit the turnovers to be ones that are not back-breaking for your defense. If it's a turnover that leads to the Texans starting back in their own 20, yeah. so be it. But if it's a turnover yeah. that gifts them another drive, those are the kind of ones that if we stack those, that's going to be how the Texans win this game. So they really need to just try, I know easier said than done, but cleanest brand of football they can play today. It's, to me, the game. I like the matchups on offense. The Browns offense line have two tackles. Yes, the Will Anderson and the other stuff for the Texans are back. We should be okay today there, though. Already prepared us for giving up 75-yard touchdown for first quarter. Charlie, I don't see that here. I actually like the cornerbacks in this game a lot. Emerson's a star. I think Newsom's going to step up in case Ward can't play. I'm hearing mixed reports. Some say Ward will never touch the field. Other reports saying he'll be just fine. So it's very hard to get a gauge on what Ward's real status is for this game. When you hear both reports be extremely different, it's very weird. <laughs> so hard to really get a gauge. But even if they don't have Ward, I like this match a lot, Charlie. Uh, I don't see them giving up big plays in this game, Tony. Do you on defense? I don't see it in this game. No. I'm really interested to see how Houston's going to approach this because with we didn't see their offense with Stroud. But with Stroud, they like to sit back in the pocket and yeah. really throw the ball downfield. Stroud is one of the highest time to throws of all quarterbacks. And most teams against the Browns – don't want to do that. They want to get the ball out as quickly as possible to to negate the the pass rush of Miles and Smith and Okoronkwo. So either they're going to have to be able to block us up or they're going to get the ball out quick and abandon their game plan. Either way, I think the Browns will be good enough to get pressure up front and without a ton of playmakers, really just Nico Collins as the receiver. I like our secondary to be able to catch tackle and keep them pretty locked down. Uh, Andrew, I agree with you. I bet your Ward does try to go today. Charlie, you're right, it is about Flacco today. Um, I also think in this game, uh, I've learned this in the playoffs throughout, when you have, like, we're just talking about, like, the pressure. Miles Garrett needs to be a star. Cooper needs to be a star. Your stars have to jump up in playoff games. You need to see a big game today for Miles, for Miles Garrett. It's time. You need to see those big plays. You need to see Martin Emerson really step up big. And Joku go off. I and I, I'll be honest with you, Tony, I'm confident they can do that. I really am. Yeah, I, I am too. I, I think Miles might not have the most productive stats today in terms of 
pure just sacks, tackles, because Houston needs to be able to take care of our pass rush. And obviously the big thing you're circling with our pass rush is Miles Garrett. So I would expect them to throw everything they have at making sure Miles Garrett doesn't disrupt the game. However, just because his stats don't show up doesn't mean he's not making an impact and allow everybody else to then get those easy matchups to where they can make the plays. But yes, he needs to be at his best, whether that's a productive stats day or not. Gix, girl, I hear what you're saying. And Tony just complimented that Garrett may not have stats, but Darius Smith, J-O-K, has played very well in the second half of the season. Cause havoc gets boog. Exactly. Put pressure on this young quarterback. You know, for people to go, oh, I hate being the favorite. Well, the Browns should be the favorite. I just read you this uh, Flacco stats. Again, for people to join. Flacco, 10 and 5 in the playoffs in his career. Seven of those were road wins. Tied for most ever with some guy named Tom Brady. So, I mean, there's a chance to today with this win, the, the winningest quarterback on the road is Joe Flacco. He plays for us. And we're probably going to be on the road. Oh, my gosh. So there's a lot of excitement there, too. But you're right. Complimentary football. No matter if Miles doesn't have the stats, uh, never lost in a wild card round either. I like that, too, Patel. Cedarius Smith, one-on-one -on -one all day. I think Cedarius Smith, time to lift. <laughs> time to lift those numbers. The one thing that's kind of slick in this game that I would remind everybody, I'll get Tony's take, the Browns are playing a team that doesn't run the ball a lot. That, thank God. They should, though, be reminded, don't let those – you know, they do have – I forget the gentleman's name for the uh, Texans. Do not let the running game get any kind of rhythm, which I don't think will be an issue in this game. But just – they should be able to tee off on Stroud. But don't forget about the running game. Stroud's not a running quarterback, as we all know. So you're not going to see RPOs in this game either, which is good. Right. Yeah, the running game for the Texans ranks like 30th near the bottom. They don't – yeah, Devin Singletary's been the workhorse late. Damian Pierce started the year. They've moved over to Singletary. He's put up numbers, but really only because they're giving him 30 touches a game. Um, it's not something that should concern us, so we need to make sure that it gets stopped first and foremost because if that's another part of the offense that we have to deal with is how they're pairing their run looks with the pass, that's just going to add even more challenges for the defense. So if you can bottle up the run quickly, I think they'll abandon it pretty quickly, and then it's all for going off on CJ. Keep them behind schedule and keep them in pass-obvious situations. Yep, Singletary's running back same. Thank you. But, yeah, that's what I see in this game. It's a huge advantage that the Browns have a lot more veterans. Again, remember, rookie coach, too, in this game. It sounds – see, on the opposite side, if I were in the Texans' shoes, that sounds great. It is a huge, huge thing to be rookies in both, quarterback and coach. Not easy, I'm telling you. Not easy. Yeah. Not, light, not a light lift. No, the experience between these two teams are polar opposite because Houston seemingly doesn't have any playoff experience anywhere. Not only do the Browns have at least everybody with some playoff experience, they also have the most important playoff experience at the positions it matters the most. So yep. really big experience there. And I expect Stefanski to really have a big day and outcoach D'Amico Ryans and Slowick and that staff. Are we worried about field goal kicking, Tony? I'm a little nervous. I know Patterson played last year for the Jaguars. I know that Bubba Ventrone made a point to say he made kicks. I would like to see everything 40 yards in them. Yeah, he's, his numbers are really good in the dome, and he's really good under 50 yards. So as long as we're not relying on him to make a 52-yarder to extend the lead to two, then, yeah, I'm fine with it. Hopefully we can be up by more than one possession and the kicking won't be make or break. Next year, why Teller has to go. Has to go. He never makes holes for running backs. I do not agree with you, Jay Dab, at all. Tony, I'll let you take that comment. I think Teller's very good. I like Teller a lot. Yeah, I don't think he's been as all pro level as he was these last his last couple of years, but that's more of product of your offensive line around you. He's still been very good, especially in the past game. I know the run game for all of them have been tough, but I would not say I would say the interior guys, Posick, Teller, and Batonio are the foundation. Just to remember this. I mean, you know, there's running back holes and there's downfield. Teller gets downfield, which makes plays that go from 10 yards to 20 yards to 30 yards. He's a great play. He's a great pancake player. That really makes a big difference when your offensive guards can go down the field and keep making tackles. He does it one of the best. Tony, again, you can tell me I'm wrong. But he does a really good job with that stuff. Yeah. Teller's – he's a good – he hasn't been as – like as dynamite as he's been in the years past, but he's still been very good. I think if you were to look at like a full all-pro voting list, he'd probably be – in the top 10 for guards, so definitely not a guy we want to get rid of. And, yeah, it brings the attitude, too. He's huge for the locker room.
brings a good attitude. Um, he is a well-liked guy in the community. Teller's fine. We got other problems that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, the tackles ooh, make me nervous. I guess we'll, maybe we should talk about that real quick too. Any words to say about Christian, any words to say about um, Hudson? Um, I feel like Stefanski is going to do his best to not allow them to get in too many one-on-one -on -one situations. We run a lot of chip releases with our tight ends, running backs. I expect him to do that today a ton, especially with probably both of their starting DNs playing. I feel like they're both going to be limited because they hadn't, I think they only got one practice in this week, but I, I don't feel too bad about it. Neither of them give me a ton of confidence, but I have confidence that the game plan will match what they're capable of. Yeah. I think the tackles will be, it's both tackle situations made me feel better because Anderson and I forget the other gentleman's name for the Texans um, who's coming back in this game. They're both going to play. They're not full strength. It's pretty clear. They're not full strength. So it should be okay there. No INT today by Flacco, of course, yes. The biggest thing is that Tony said, which I agree, no pick sixes, no interceptions that get you inside the 10. Mm -hmm. That's been a lot of consistency in this game. Again, I will say this. That's my biggest worry in this game. It's one thing to have turnovers. It's one thing to have turnovers on a silver platter when you're giving up touchdowns. And the Browns' interceptions, even throughout this winning streak, has been still that way. Where it's like, oh, we're not even teeing you up. We're going to give you a touchdown. Or we're going to give you inside the 10. So you cannot have that kind of stuff today. All right, Tony, I do like the Browns at the end of the day to win this game. I think they're going to win 27-17. And the reason being is I think as the game goes on, I think the veteran of the Browns will be stiffened. And I, I get the feeling late in the game, Stroud's going to really struggle. I wouldn't be surprised if Stroud comes out of the box hot. But as the game goes on, I do think I do think the, the rookiness of that game is going to overtake him. Yeah, it's 27-17 was exactly what I was thinking as well. I think we're going to be able to put up some points against them as long as we can protect a little bit. And C.J. Stroud's numbers against cover one are horrendous. That's the worst coverage he faces. And as we've noticed all year, we run a lot of man-to-man -man cover one. So if that trend holds up, it should be an easy day. No back-breaking turnovers that give them easy chances. Yeah. That's it. I think, again, Stroud coming out hot, I can totally see that. Wouldn't be surprised if they get a couple points early. But as the game goes on, I really do think that. Look for more 12 personnel today. Jay yeah. Dizzle I agree with you about that. Um, I like this. And I'll tell you what, from what I'm seeing around, um, the, to everybody's point, and I love bad weather. Boy, what's going on in Kansas City and what's going to be going on in Buffalo on Sunday? Wow. <laughs> so it, there's no inclement conditions. I am not naive. This team is actually built for the indoor. So let it rip. It's a big advantage today. That's my last point. It's actually a huge advantage that they're indoors today. This team is built on fast and analytics, and they will play better in the dome. They really will. Yeah. It's great to not be in the negative 30-degree wind chill or the 55-mile-per-hour winds in Buffalo. For those, it's nice to be in a nice, cool AC. Right. For those who missed it, Kansas City might be the coldest game on record to ever play in the NFL tonight with the wind chill. And currently in Buffalo, they're predicting 50-mile-per-hour winds with snow on 1 o'clock Sunday against the Steelers. Mason Rudolph passing a 50-mile-per-hour Good luck. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, Tony. We'll be here. Check out all of our content, BelieveInTheLand.com. We both like the Browns today. Good luck today. Oh, oh, come on, Jay Dizzle. Jump on board. Enjoy the game. See you after you have. We'll be here at halftime. Be here after the game. If we didn't win the Super Bowl, but if we do win a Super Bowl, uh, special teams have to be better. I will just say this, Jay Dab. The special teams right now is missing our key component, Hopkins. I'm not going to get into scoring touchdowns and stuff, but Hopkins would – I feel great they had Hopkins in this game. They, yeah. he, will, he will come back, it sounds like, but obviously it's not going to be today. Fingers crossed. Go Browns! Go Browns. See you here at halftime.